Hey there, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of virtual reality. So this is going to be uh, a little video where I'm going to go into virtual reality and do a little bit of a tour around something called VR chat. Uh, this is something I uh, mentioned I might do a few videos ago um, and I had some pretty good feedback from people saying yes, go for it and they'd be quite happy to uh, to watch. So um, I'll just cobble this together. It might be quite a long nattery video, the sort of thing you could probably just put on in the background if you're doing the ironing or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I will forewarn you, I'm gonna be recording from inside the virtual reality headset so you'll get to see what I see. But if you watch it on a big screen, every single movement of my head will be translated onto the screen. So ideally what you need to do is watch this on a little tiny screen because otherwise on a big screen, it might make you feel a bit woozy after a while. So uh, yeah, watch this on a little screen and some of the worlds will probably have flashing lights in them as well. So there's my little warning. But uh, if it's not your cup of tea, obviously pass this video by, but if you're interested or curious, then feel free to stick around and uh, we'll go in and uh, see what's what. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we are in uh, VR chat. Now this is not really a game so much as a social experience. Uh, it's essentially a place where you can meet other people uh, in virtual reality and it has hundreds if not thousands of different worlds, virtual reality worlds that you can visit. Some of those I'm going to be showing you in this video today. Now, as far as the uh, setup goes, right now I've just got my headset on, so you're seeing essentially through my eyes. So everything I'm seeing is being recorded. So in VR chat, you have an avatar, and this is my avatar. Hello. <laughs> this is one of many avatars that I use. This is not one I've made myself. This is a publicly available avatar, but only if you're doing virtual reality on the PC. So right now, today, we're recording on the PC. This is uh, PC VR. Although on my head, I'm using the Oculus Quest 2, um, but it is connected wirelessly through the PC, which gives you a much richer experience. Now, you can go into VR chat on the standalone Oculus Quest, but it's nowhere near as powerful, and many of the worlds are not available. Um, because the headset is just not powerful enough on its own to be able to, to power those worlds. But obviously with the PC, you've got the, uh, the graphic power that you need in order to visit these other worlds. So this is um, one of, like I say, many avatars and uh, loving the whole ears thing. <laughs> so basically I'm, I'm like a, a cat, sort of anime cat person. And uh, you interact with other people in their avatars. And uh, it, it's great because you can express just like you would in the real world. The, the, your lips move as you speak, which is really good. And you've got all sorts of little buttons and things you can press so you can do things, uh, expressions and things. And I can do things with my hands. So if I just relax my hands, that's normal. But if I pull the triggers, then my, my fingers grip. I've got like grip fingers. I can also signal with my hands in real life. So I can put thumbs up, I can point my fingers uh, and I'm doing that in real life and it's actually translating into uh, my avatar, which is cool. So let's go and have a look at some of my favorite worlds, uh, the places where I frequent quite often when I come to VR chat. So. First of all, let's call up the menu and we go to worlds. And if I go to my worlds, where are my favorite worlds? Uh, so one of the uh, most frequented worlds that I go to is this one, and it's a flight world. Um, now in VRChat, you have public instances of these worlds, or you can create a new private instance, or you can create a new public instance if you like. Um, so in a, in a public world, there's, there's a public instance of this world. There are six people in this world. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to open a new instance and I'm going to make a private world. So it's invite only. Uh, and that's simply because if I go into 
a public instance of this world, you often get taken straight into dog fights and people want to blow you up and things. So um, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to just have a private world where there's going to be nobody shooting at me. <laughs> So here we are, we're on the deck of an aircraft carrier. And if I wander over here, you can see uh, what's going on. Now there's aircraft everywhere and you can fly. We're gonna go for a little flight in one of these aircraft. And you, you also don't need an aircraft to fly. If I literally just jump up and pull the trigger uh, and I can, I can guide the direction I fly in just by pointing the uh, the controller I've got in my hand, but you can actually see the wider view here. So that's the aircraft carrier. And if I fly up in the air, you can see a little bit more of this world. So we've got another airfield over there. Um, where are we there? There's another airfield. Obviously we've got land mass. We've got a big sort of city that you can fly around. And if I turn around, there's another land mass over here uh, with a weird little sort of bridge there not quite sure why that's there but um, there we go looks like there's a refueling plane hopefully you can see that on the end of my finger there that's a refueling plane that flies around we can go and take a look at that in a while and there are a few target practice oil rigs down here um, which are good so let's just respawn back onto the deck so what we can do is go and have a little flight. So I'm going to jump into this plane, which looks, it's either a, it looks a bit like a tornado, um, I think. Is that a tornado or is that a tomcat? I'm not sure. I'm a bit rusty. I used to know these things, but I'm very rusty on these things now. Um, so we just jump into the cockpit. Uh, it's quite noisy. Let me just get the canopy down. And... That'll take out some of the sound. There we go. Now, with, as always, what I've always said in VR is if you're watching this on a flat screen and you've never, ever experienced VR, you will not get why this is so good. You will not understand why uh, this is so attractive. But right now, you're looking at this on a 2D screen and it's just like you're watching somebody playing a computer game. Uh, and to me, I mean, I'm not a massive computer game fan. There's, there's very few computer games that I enjoy. Um, and to many people, seeing this on a flat screen, it's going to be pretty dull. It's not going to be that exciting. But to me, with the headset on, it's amazing. My brain thinks I'm sat in the cockpit of this fighter jet. And if I turn my head to the right, I can look out of the window. I can see the bodywork. It's absolutely convincing my brain that I'm inside this aircraft and I know I'm going to go for a flight in it. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. I mean, I can look back and look at the wings back there. Like I say, the only way you will ever get to fully understand how amazing and so like, exciting this is, is if somebody comes along and puts a VR headset on your head. Until that day arrives, you will never fully understand how good this is. Um, but right now, like I say, I'm sat in a fighter jet making a YouTube video, and that's exactly what my brain is telling me. Um, now, if I look down here, you can see the throttle grip. And if I just gr ga grab the grip button on my um, controller and just move it forward a little bit, you can see we've actually started moving. And then I can use the joystick, the other grip button on the joystick to steer the aircraft. And I'm going to steer it over to a catapult over here. And uh, then we're going to go and take off and have a little flight. Now, the brilliant thing about this is it's all free. VR chat is actually free. I mean, there is a paid version of it as well, but I'm just using the freebie one. And uh, I have spent so much time in VR. It's uh, especially VR chat. It's just so, so entertaining. It's so much better than just kind of, you know, vegging out in front of the TV of an evening. Uh, this is so much better. And especially if you've got lots of people uh, in the same world, because you can go off and have dog fights and sort of talk to people. And it's just very, very social and enjoyable and great fun. So it's got a flight system on here which is very user friendly. You've basically got two little circles in front of you 
and they're represented by the two joysticks on each of your controllers. So, for example, the one on the left here. If I just take the joystick and, and roll it around, you'll see that little arrow, and it just points to whatever it is you need. So if I need, um, say, the brake, I just point it down at the brake, and then I pull the trigger on the front, and that applies the brake. Um, and it also confirms that on the head-up display there. Uh, same for this side. If, you, if say, I want the guns, I just uh, point the, the little pointer towards the gun, and when I pull the trigger, it shoots. Um, so you've got anti-aircraft missile, air-to-air -air missile, air-to-ground missile there. Um, you've got a bomb uh, capability there. You've got your gears and the flaps, and you've got the rest to hook for when you're going to land as well. And you can have smoke, so you can be like the, the red arrows. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's, let's take off and have a little flight. So I just need to grab the throttle. And if you see on the head-up display, as I move the throttle forward, on the bottom left-hand side down here, uh, you can see the, the throttle level. And when that turns orange, that means the afterburner's uh, on as well. Um, and I'll just switch to catapult, uh, grab the joystick. Uh, I'm going to turn the limit, flight limits off as well. Um, and here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. We're off. And that's it. We're in flight. And once again, my brain actually thinks I'm in flight. It's just, it's so convincing. The only things that I haven't got is G-forces, but everything else just feels like the real deal. Um, so if I turn the flaps off, take the gear up, um, and then we can go off and have a little flight. I think I'm going to fly over the city over there. So uh, if I just turn and use the joystick to turn around. <laughs> uh, and here we go, we've got full afterburner going, you can probably hear it in the background. Uh, it does eat through the fuel quite quickly if you keep the afterburner on, so you can throttle back so that the, uh, the afterburner's not on and just cruise and the fuel lasts a lot longer then. Um, but it's, it's just so much fun. Um, and th this, like I say, this world is particularly good. The aircraft are actually quite realistic compared to other worlds. There's a lot more detail gone into um, these particular aircraft. Um, and there's also a, a cool little Black Hawk helicopter as well, which you might have a little go on later. Um, but the sensation of speed and of flight, you, you get the full you get the full packet here. Um, I mean, just p flying past these buildings, it just kind of really feels, um, you, you've got the, the, the real sensation like you're going to, hit, uh, going to hit them if you get it wrong. Um, but uh, this is so cool. Let's see if I can fly under one of these bridges. Am I going to do it? Yes, there we go. Um, oh, need to pull up. So if I'm going to land on that other airfield, so I put put the brakes on a little bit. Um, I can't remember where it is now. We lined up the runway. There we go. Oh, stalling. Going too slow here. Let's just get the gear down, flaps down. Let's just go in for a little landing, and then we'll have a go on that Black Hawk and then we'll go on to another world. So hit the brakes a little bit and a nice smooth landing. There we go. Job done. Shuttle right back. The Black Hawk is over there. So if I just slow right down, I'm gonna going to go over the uh, the sand here. Now obviously in real life you probably wouldn't be able to go over sand but look even the shadows are realistic. This is exactly what it would look like in this 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 light. Um, but like I said the whole thing's just got this amazing feel to it. There's there's more aircraft in those hangars as well. But what I'm interested in is this Black Hawk here. So I'm just going to bail out here. 
So that's the plane, and if I just jump over to the Black Hawk here, look, you can see my shadow <laughs> on the ground. Um, now this is an absolute pig to fly. It took me a long time to figure it out. Let's just shut the canopy doors. There we go, and I'm going to turn the smoke off. So the secret of this is just to be really gentle with the yoke um, and the joystick because if you're reckless with this you'll crash really easily but with a little bit of care you've got to kind of treat it really gently you can actually get some good speed on this and you might be able to fly through that tunnel there let's have a go it took me ages to figure out how to do this and now I'm filming it it's probably going to make a liar of me <laughs> and I'll end up crashing but we'll give it a go. But there's all sorts of obstacles and things that you can fly through and around. Uh, it just makes it fun. But like I say, as flight simulators go, I mean, flight simulators have been around for years as, as computer games. Um, but in virtual reality, they're a whole new, you know, completely different animal. And you just, you really, really do get a a feel for this being you know as close to the real deal as you can get um, it's just amazing uh, like I say the only thing that's missing is g-forces um, but this particular world is really good with like its sound effects uh, the sounds are pretty realistic so all right let's just ease back on the blade tilt there and we'll go for a landing on the carrier but even even the, the realism is so good that like even when you come off the throttle the whole helicopter wants to twist round to the left or to the right depending on whether you're accelerating or decelerating um, but like I say this one in particular is a, is a bit of a uh, a pig to fly it really does fight you all the way but if you're just nice and gentle you can good control over it so we'll just see if we can get ourselves on the middle of the deck there there we go nice slow descent the only problem with this is oh, there are no brakes oops there we go look see if I I let go of the uh, the joystick as soon as I start accelerating, as soon as I lift up on the yoke, it wants to it wants to twist clockwise, which I'm going to assume happens in real life. Um, and then when I come off the throttle, it wants to go the other way. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, this is a great world, and and look, there are several flight worlds. Uh, in VR chat and I, I go to quite a few of them but this by far is my favorite so let's find ourselves another world and uh, we'll go and check that out so what have we got uh, <clears throat> oh, there's, a, there's a really nice Studio Ghibli world here this is a, a tribute to um, uh, Hayao Miyazaki uh, which is the um, the guy that did all these Studio Ghibli classic movies and this is no longer on the searchable database on VR Chat, but fortunately, I visited it. Visited, yeah, I can't speak. Visited it a while back, and I put it into my memory, in you know, into my favourites memory. So I was able to go to it. So uh, let's create a new instance and invite only again, and uh, let's join it. <laughs> Okay, we're here. You may recognize this from Howl's Moving Castle. And one of the things I will have to do as soon as I get in is turn the volume down because of the music. But as soon as you go into this really nice world, look left and straight away. <laughs> nice little flyby there. I'm just gonna turn the background music down because uh, I don't want to get a copyright issue. 
Most of the worlds have got a mirror, so... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is a lovely little world. It's, it's really summery and nice as well, which I love. And this is a, a real nod to Studio Ghibli. And if, you, if you're a fan of Studio Ghibli movies or anime, you'll probably recognise a lot of the things in here. And another thing is... Um, I probably mentioned this before in the trucking videos. When you are in these beautiful sunny places and these summery places, your it's like your brain can't tell the difference between this being artificial and real life. So you still get those summery feel-good endorphins as if you're actually standing in this kind of summery meadow and your brain still produces these, these endorphins. It's amazing. Is that from Tales of Nausicaa? I don't recognise it. I'm going to have to do some homework on that. If you know what, what this is from, it's like a, a battleship, but it's like it's guns everywhere, but it's obviously like an airship as well. But that's one of the Studio Ghibli movies I have not yet seen. But yeah, if you know what that's from, do feel free to let me know in the notes. And the same goes for this bouncing scarecrow guy. I kind of feel like I should know which movie this is from, but I don't. Now I do know this one, this is a, a nod to Miyazaki's last video or last movie that he made which was called, ah, uh, it's gone, <laughs> it's all that sugar I had over the weekend, it's giving me brain fog, um, The Wind Rises and it's a visually spectacular uh, movie, it's absolutely delightful to watch, although I have to admit the storyline I found a little bit dry, but oh look, there's Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. <laughs> we'll see her again in a minute. But yeah, the the wind rises with the very last movie that uh, Hayao. Um, <laughs> I was going to say Mazamune. He's a sword maker, isn't he? <laughs> oh, my brain's not working today. Um, Miyazaki. That was his last one. It was called The Wind Rises, and it, it's I watched it in 4K. Uh, from a Blu-ray and it was just absolutely like jaw-droppingly beautiful. It was just this moving artwork that lasted however long, sort of hour, hour and a half. And it was just an absolute delight to watch just the visuals alone. But like I say, the story itself was a little bit on the dry side, but uh, the visuals totally made up for it. Uh, I think this is the house from My Neighbour Totoro. I seem to recall it looking like this. This is like a traditional old-fashioned Japanese style house. In in a lot of the worlds you get people meet up. These are because it's a very social thing uh, and so you get lots of people uh, have these take these photographs while they're visiting these worlds and they send them into the the world makers and they put them up as, as pictures. That's very very common in VR chat. Like I say it is a, is a very primarily a very social thing. So there's a little hot tub here. I think you can, yeah, like you can sit down. <laughs> there we go. We're in the water. Um, in the tub. <laughs> if we go outside, we've got um, lots of goodies here. Cake, anyone? And what's that I hear? Coming from that tree. Could it be? <laughs> There he is, Totoro himself, snoring away. <laughs> and, oh, a Kadama. You know what? I've been in this world several times. I've never noticed that. Is that oh, no, he's back again. That's a little tree spirit from uh, Princess Mononoke. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so that's, that's a new, new little thing I've discovered. I didn't even know the, the Kadamas were visible. Funny little things. But if, you've, if you've ever seen Princess Mononoke, which I think is quite possibly one of my most favourite Studio Ghibli movies, although many would argue that, there's Kiki, um, everybody's got their favourite, but um, I think it's because San, the main character, rides around on a wolf. But there's Kiki. Kiki's Delivery Service was also a really good classic Studio Ghibli movie. Um, very enjoyable. This is from, I don't know, 
but you can actually go up for a ride on this. You can sit on there and it'll take you for a little flight. I'm not going to do it because it's very juddery. <laughs> um, but obviously we've got Howe's Moving Castle up here. Again, it's another one of the, the, the top uh, favourites for many people is Howe's Moving Castle. Uh, you've got these big steam things here doing their thing. Um, Shimleys. Little, <laughs> little fireplace thingy there. Let me just jump up here if I can do it. Okay, so we're now stood on top of Howe's Moving Castle. Um, that's the little house we were in a while ago. Now the sun, you can see, is actually starting to set. And when it fully sets, some magic happens and it gets really interesting. This is what I love about this world um, because we can see it from up here, if you like, or we can go closer. Um, let's watch it from up here. I think you get a better view. So we're just going to wait for the, the sun to set. It's not got far to go. And if you look at the shadows, the shadows are getting longer and longer. I hold my head still so you can see the shadow moving. Um, but the sun has to fully set and the moon has to fully come up. So I'll probably just fast forward this until we get to the moon rising. So when the moon rises, uh, the spirits come out and you'll see any second now some cool stuff happening. There we go. That's just arrived, that big yellow thing there. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. And then we've got like the spirit uh, city or town over there. So let's go down and have a look. Now, if you've ever seen the Studio Ghibli classic Spirited Away, you'll know exactly what that building is. If not, we'll go and have a look. So this is a secret entrance way. Uh, you can't see anything up on that hill yet, but you will in a minute. You ready? And also, when we get through this tunnel, you'll get a quick glimpse of San from Princess Mononoke, but only a one second glimpse. Ready? There she is. <laughs> and she's gone. Um, but you'll probably hear the wolf howl. But there we go at the top of the hill. It's the bathhouse from Spirited Away. Now, also, you've got these things falling from the sky. Again, I don't know what these are from. These kind of sparkly things falling down. They upset my PC when I get near them because um, they're graphically intense. And it normally makes my PC's uh, fan kick in. Um, but yeah, look, we, we can go up and have a look at the uh, the Spirited Away bathhouse. You've also got the little tram over there, which we can go on in a minute. Um, but we'll just we'll go into the bathhouse, and you can see what a cool world this is. There we go. Recognise this guy? You will if you've seen Spirited Away. Uh, I think it's got a name. I can't remember what it is, though. It's been a long time since I've seen Spirited Away. So if we go in here, you've got all the spirits in their baths. <laughs> um, and again, you won't get this unless you've watched Spirited Away. Um, you'll recognise this guy. You can actually take the food from the table here, but if you do, you get cursed and your avatar turns into a pig. But uh, yeah, each of these is a little bath. And uh, these ones are empty. There's a scary looking guy here taking a bath. And you can also go up on the balcony up there. And there is the old granny who runs it all. <laughs> you can go up there. I won't, I won't go up there because it's you've pretty much seen it. Um, but yeah, you've got some more little spirits having a little tea ceremony here. <laughs> 
If we go back outside, there's that sort of fire rain again, whatever it is, like little meteors. Um, but you've also got, uh, I think you can get to it from around here. Evening. There's a little secret entrance way here. And you can go down the stairs. Now, the girl in, in Spirited Away, she spent a lot of her time in the boiler room, which is where she sort of hid. And uh, there's another world that, that's like a portal to another world, which will take you to the boiler room. Um, I won't go there for now. Uh, what I will do, though, is go onto this platform um, because we can catch the tram and I can see it just in the distance there. I'll just give it a minute to arrive and we'll, we'll jump on the tram and we'll head out to, uh, there's, there's like a, a station out there and it's called Numenara. But yeah, we can jump on it and go to the, the station over there. We can actually travel on a train. In fact, there are several worlds in VR chat where you can actually travel on trains. Um, we, can, we can go check some out if you like. But the detail in this is just so cool. <laughs> and then I'm going to jump in. Uh, now you have to attach yourself to the actual seat, otherwise the tram will go without you. So we've got ourselves a passenger. There we go, we're going to start moving now. And there's that big battle airship coming back again. You can just see it out the window there. Okay, here we are, Numenara. That's it, we can get off now. See you later, mate. I'll just jump on the station. So yeah, this is a, a little station called Numenara. But anyway, if I go through this tunnel, oh, there's the train going. Oh, that's interesting, it's going back. I always thought it went off that way, but uh, so it's just a shuttle between the two places. So if I go through here, it takes me to this little portal, and there's the train. And then this house, which you can't go in because I've tried in the past, but I don't know, again, I don't know what movie this house is from. Um, I don't know whether the, the washing on the line is uh, relevant or significant in any way. Um, but you can have a little seat here and just chill out. Watch the sun rise. The sun's coming back up. Um, but anyway, this is the Studio Ghibli tribute world. And uh, it's kind of uh, just a nice little world to have a little wander around. Okay, let's find ourselves another world then. Can't um, go anywhere without going to Poppy Street. So Poppy Street is a lovely little world. It's just, um, it's, a, it's a Japanese... Uh, you get a lot of Japanese people there, but it's very sociable. And um, if ever I went to Japan, I would love to seek out this type of place. You know, those little those little side alleys and the back alleys with all the interesting stuff going on. So I'm going to join a public world. Uh, let's go to one with 32 people in it. Um, now, I will have to mute my microphone as soon as I arrive. Uh, but you'll hear lots of people talking, probably mostly in Japanese, but um, we'll have a quick wander around anyway. So let's go. Japanese drinking district, Poppy Street. So if ever I went to Japan, this would be the sort of place I'd love to go. Just wander down these little side alleys, because um, that's where all the interesting stuff is. There we go. Right, so I've just muted my microphone and um, so there's a lot of Japanese people here. But everywhere you look, you've got all these little these little street bars. Um, <laughs> oh. Somebody away from keyboard. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Obviously, I have no clue what they're saying, um, but it is it, it is quite um, fun. Sometimes you you get Japanese people speaking English, and you can actually have conversations with them. All right, let's find ourselves another world then. Oh yeah, Project Aincrad. Now, if you know anything about anime, you will have heard of Sword Art Online. And if I go to let's go to a public world. Um, so there's eight people in this world. I'm going to join a public instance of this world. And this world is based on Sword Art Online. They've actually tried uh, making uh, Aincrad. I think there's a whole bunch of people who got together to make this world. And it's really good um, because it, it's actually got like a menu-driven system uh, just like on um, Sword Art Online. And also you, when you enter the world, you go through this sort of vortex thing as well it's just really well done really well put together here we go so uh welcome to project Encrad. now if you press this oops it will change my avatar um but then you actually enter the world just like you do on sword art online <laughs> there we go And we're in Aincrad. Um, and this is like a replica of the actual town in the uh, in the movie or in the um, in the series. But if you want to hit the menu system, just like in the, the movie, you just do this with your hand, and it actually it's like got the proper menu in there, and then you can sort of select things. Um, you've got all sorts of options and things, or you've got inventory, skills, equipment. I've got a sword if I want one. Um, and uh, I think they're still working on things like um, like jewels and um, quests and things. If you go on quests, it's not quite ready yet, um, but I presume they're working on it. But yeah, and it's, it's a massive world as well. Once you go actually actually go out into the wilderness, there are other towns out there. The only thing is it takes a little while... Uh, to go anywhere because you walk quite slowly. I'll just step outside a minute and have a look. But the boundary is dictated by this huge, great sort of disc that goes right around the whole world. Uh, but these paths lead, lead, lead off to all sorts of other little places. Um, and you, I, I've spent several hours in here just kind of wandering around i teamed up with someone once and we just kind of explored and it was really good fun but anyway yeah that's project aincrad well worth a look um i think it's aincrad i think that's how you pronounce it uh all right so let's find another world then um another favorite is uh this submarine it's submerge is really good um, if I just go to new instance, I'll do a new instance of this one. This is like a half hour long experience. Now I'm not going to, not going to film the whole lot, but, um, what I will do, I'll, I'll show you some highlights and, uh, might, might fast forward f through a few bits, but basically you're on a survey boat and, uh, this is a big sort of, um, oceanic survey boat and, if you click the accept button, you get to go on a submarine and you can choose which seat that you want to sit in. So I'm going to choose, I don't know, front seat left. And it puts you in this submarine. Now you can go in here with four other people and have the same experience with other people. So there's four seats behind you or three seats there. Um, and you're essentially in this submarine and you obviously go under the water and you just have this amazing experience and uh, there's all little controls everywhere you can't really don't think you can do anything with the controls so if I click launch now it'll do its little startup sequence and then we'll 
we'll go underwater and we'll just have this adventure underwater. It's just one of those kind of things you, you sit back, you know, with a nice, nice drink and a snack. And it, I suppose it's like going to the cinema for 30 minutes. Um, but you're, you're in the movie as such. Uh, so they're lowering us down into the water now. Now this is very graphically heavy, this one. Uh, so my the fan on the PC really kicks in and, and stays on all throughout this sort of 30 minutes so the graphics card is working really hard um, but it's graphically quite spectacular as far as VR experiences go so yeah you basically get this this tour it lasts about half an hour and uh, you just go through this sort of underwater world and it's different, all the, all, it's changing along all the way and uh, it's really good. And a bit later on you encounter all sorts of um, interesting things. There's like a, almost like a giant UFO or spaceship or something um, that you fly down towards. And uh, a bit later on you, you see a, a sea monster and everything. And it's just really nice. You get some nice music plays in the background as well. You you get to go past some big sleeping whales. You got some rays as well. There's a whole bunch of them, I think, come along in a minute. And this is, like I say, this is so cool in VR. If you're watching this on the flat screen, it's just going to look like a computer game. But if you're in VR with the headset on, it actually feels like you're in the sub. You know, it really feels real. It's just so cool. There we go, there's all the the other rays up there. We've got a hammerhead shark coming towards us. Mm -hmm. But even now the you know the graphics are um you can still see their computer graphics, they're they're quite basic, but in VR we're still pretty much at the cutting edge, at the very sort of the, the, you know the, the very early days of, of like proper VR I mean I know VR has been around for you know they've been trying to launch VR for years and years um, but it's only now that we've got the, the computer technology is or the chip technology is advanced such that we can really get some good um, experiences now and obviously things are only going to get better so I'm really excited for what you know life's going to bring us or what VR is going to bring us in the next five to ten years. Um, the graphics are going to be a lot more realistic um, and uh, you know the, the whole VR experience is just going to get better and better and I find that kind of exciting because I'm such a VR sort of fan. But here we go, we're going, going into a cave and I think it'll all light up in a minute and we'll see in it. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll record a little bit of this, probably fast forward some of the more sort of mundane bits, because this is, thing is moving along fairly slowly. Um, but like I say, it goes on for a good 30 minutes and you get to experience all sorts in there. So it's a really good uh, experience. I've done this several times now. And it's just, if you just want to sit back and relax. <sighs> Excuse me. This is a, you know, a really nice experience. Well, apart from the monster bit. <laughs> Here we go. We're coming up to the uh, sleeping whales bit now. And the one thing I love about this is the sense of scale. These things, to me, in VR, are absolutely gigantic. And I'm not sure if that's going to come across on the, the 2D screen. Um, but these things, these like giant sleeping whales, they're absolutely gargantuan. And I think we're going to fly past one. Um, but yeah, the sense of scale, it's really clever how they've, they've done it. Um, but this, I, I put it this way, if this was in real life, I think I'd be pretty uh, intimidated by the, just the sheer size of these things. Um, I'll just do uh, one more world and then we'll call it a night for tonight, I think. 
Um, but if you want to see more of this, then let me know and I, I can find some other worlds and we can have a look around. So what should we do? Uh, so we could go to a, a nightclub. There's um, all sorts of nightclubs going. Actually, no, we can't because they'll be playing music with copyright. But there are lots of nightclubs which I go to quite often. You, you get a busy one. Uh, and it's quite often it's a live DJ session and you get to it's really cool because you get to dance in a nightclub with lots of other people from all over the world, um, which is always good. And uh, the music's often pretty good as well. Uh, and there's, there's quite a few different clubs um, available in VR chat. But I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll end on a flight world. I'm going to go test pilots, which is probably the, the other most frequented one that I go to and uh, yeah this is called test pilots and it's it's pretty good it's not I would say detail wise it's not as good as the first one we went to uh, but you've got more variety of aircraft in this one and you've got things like a b-52 you've got a blackbird which flies really really fast um, and you've got some really cool structures to be able to fly around So this is test pilots. Uh, it's like sunset at the moment. What I'm going to do before I do anything, I'm going to go to the light control and I'm just going to change the uh, the time of day. So I make it sort of daytime and that's just a little easier to see what you're doing. So here they've got like, uh, if you remember that Black Hawk helicopter that I flew earlier, they've got other helicopters, it, but this is, much more lightweight and you can tell that when you actually fly around in this particular one it's a whole lot easier to fly than that black hawk was and yet it's using the same flight same flight system yet this is this one feels a lot less heavy than the other one um, and you've got a lot more control as well over the, the weapon say for example i've got a rocket pod here um, and i can sort of blow stuff up quite easily so I'm being quite uh, outrageous here, like shooting things. But um, yeah, these helicopters are a lot, a lot easier to fly. But this one's got uh, jet fighters as well. It's got experimental aircraft as well, although you can't fly this one unless you're a Patreon member. Um, but the experimental aircraft that used to be there is this one. And so they put this one into the public domain now, so you can actually jump in and fly this one. Although, if I remember rightly, this one is actually quite a bit of a handful to fly. I can give it a go. But I think it's really easy to crash this one. It's quite an unstable aircraft, this one. Uh, see if we can land it without crashing it. So it's hard to see as well, because you haven't got great views um, in the windows but oh there we go I've landed it okay that's a strange looking helicopter that but what I love about this one is you've got you've got a b-52 um, this is an actual b-52 that you can fly so we'll go for a quick flight on that let's get the canopy down so we got our HUD, there we go. And uh, we can just go for it. I turn the flight limits off and we're gonna take off in a B-52. Although for some reason it doesn't get up much speed on this runway. Um, but let's ditch the flaps and we'll ditch the gear as soon as we're off the runway. There we go. And again, this feels like a big cumbersome sort of heavy aeroplane and the controls reflect that as well um, although this is still quite maneuverable uh, compared to um, some of those helicopters uh, let's see if we can fly under this bridge yeah you can do all sorts of stunts and things in this Yeah, there we go. Cool. And 
then we can perhaps fly over the aircraft carrier. We could even bomb it. So we can bomb the aircraft carrier. So, there we go. Bombs away. <laughs> you can hear them going off. Um, in fact, if I slow down a bit, maybe put the gears down. I can try landing on this airstrip here. There's the uh, the Blackbird is here. Um, just slow down a bit. We go for a flight on the Blackbird. That's pretty fast. Uh, I may have to crash this because I don't think I'm going to be able to land on this runway. Oh, maybe. Be a bit of a bouncy land, but... Oh, oh, done it. There we go. Can we stop in time? There we go. Perfect. Okay. So over here... We've got a blackbird, well, a VR approximation of a blackbird. Um, but if we jump in here, go for a flight, we get the canopy down, throttle up, take the flight limits off. We'll just taxi to this runway here. There we go, we go full throttle. And this thing goes up to Mach about, about Mach four and a half. Whoops! No! Oh, got away with it. Thought we were going to crash then. Um, but yeah, this thing goes really fast. It's so fast, none of the missiles on the other aircraft can catch it uh, once you're up to speed. Uh, but you get a real sensation of speed in this one, uh, which is cool. And if you go past these buildings here, you get that. We're only doing Mach 2 at the moment, but it will go up to uh, Mach 4.5 and it eats through the fuel like crazy. Look, we've already got, whoops, we've already gone through like a fifth of the fuel already, just taking off. But I would like to go to Mach 5 in this, but you, you literally run out of fuel before you can get there. But look how fast the ground is going past. <laughs> so we're max 3.3 now. Gonna have to make some adjustments if I'm not gonna crash at these buildings here. There we go. But the next pass we'll be doing Mac over Mac 4. In fact what we can do is fly over the airfield there. That's the airfield where we took off in the B-52. But you get such a sensation of speed with this, it's awesome. So doing Mach 4 now. And losing height. Whoops. Now this is fun to fly amongst all of the, uh, the stuff down here. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is throttle back. Oops, pulling too many G's. I'm not sure I'm going to. Oops, uh, we made it. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. Um... Right, I'm just going to bail. Uh, there you go. The plane goes off on its own. <laughs> but I'm just going to respawn. If we jump into like the Euro, I think it's a Euro fighter here with its forward swept wings. Um, drop the canopy, drop the flight limits. We'll go for a little flight. Um, yeah, it's really good fun to be able to go and fly over in this zone over here. Now, if you're new to VR, you will not be able to do this uh, because you'll get nauseous. Um, you have to spend some time in VR to get your, it's like getting your sea legs. Um, but once you've got your sea legs, you are able to do crazy things. Um, so if I just 
go here, get the smoke on, uh, you're able to do like absolutely bonkers things and uh, <laughs> fly around and do loop the loops and things without actually getting that nausea. The thing is, VR, VR nausea is the worst thing in the world. It's just the most awful feeling uh, you can ever experience. And the VR, uh, sorry, the, the nausea creeps up on you really quickly. You get a little bit of a warning uh, where you uh, start to feel a tiny bit queasy and that's the time you have to take your headset off because uh, if that's the only warning you're getting and if you don't um, take any notice of it, if you try to see see it through and, and sort of wait it out, it doesn't work and all of a sudden it just creeps up on you, like it, sorry, it rushes up on you um, and you can feel absolutely dreadful for hours afterwards. Um, so it's really important, especially when you're new to VR, um, that you you really are wary of that, you know. If you feel a tiny bit queasy, get that headset off as quick as you can, um, because otherwise you will be in trouble. Um, but once you've been doing it for a while, I've been doing this for a long, over a year, you can do things like this <laughs> and not, not even think twice about it. Um, oops, I need to slow down a bit or I'm going to crash. Um, but yeah, you can really sort of go to town on the the acrobatics and things, and you you do fine. Um, but if if you're new to VR, there's just no way you're going to be able to do it. Uh, so it is something you have to acquire over time. Uh, it's like an ability. But like I say, it's like getting your sea legs. If you go out to sea on a on a wobbly boat, uh, you you know the chances are you're going to feel like seasick for a while. Um, but eventually, you just kind of get used to it. Um, so anyway, let's uh, see if I can thread the needle here. There we go. So, um, <laughs> with that little alarm you're hearing, that's I'm pulling too many G's, and if you if you pull too many, the aircraft just implodes. Uh, so you've got to be a little bit careful. Um, but it is really good fun, just kind of flying around here. Uh, it's even more fun if you've got a passenger. <laughs> <laughs> whether they can uh, they, they kind of it, to be honest it, it's better flying this you know being in control because you know what turns are coming but if you're a passenger you generally have to close your eyes otherwise you will still get nauseous even if you have got your sea legs if somebody else is flying uh, you can get in trouble with with you know with with the nausea um, because you don't quite know when the turns are coming um, but there we go. That's cool. So anyway, I'm going to I think I'm going to call this a day now. Um, we, we visited a few worlds. If you want to see more, uh, do let me know and uh, I'll perhaps do another one of these videos. But um, this has taken me this is taking me up towards the two hour mark. And uh, no doubt I will be whittling down this uh, video in the editing to sort of cut out all the boring bits. Um, but uh, yeah. Just let me know how, you, how, how we're doing with this video. I know a lot of people, when I mentioned I was going to do a video of this nature, uh, a lot of people uh, said that they would be interested in seeing it. So it would be interesting to get your, your feedback on this video. Do you want to see more like this or should I just stick with this one and be done with it? Um, but VR chat has hundreds, well thousands um, of, of worlds all, whoops, <laughs> I just blew myself up, never mind. Right, so let's pop up here to the to the mirror so I can look you in the eye as I sign off. Um, there we go. So that was my brief little tour of VR chat. Be interesting to get your feedback. Is this something you want to see more of? There are thousands, well, certainly hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands of worlds in VR chat that we can go and visit and take a look at and uh, and see. Uh, so if you want to see any of these other worlds, you want to see another video like this, then uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, but that is it from me for this video. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day. and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Cheerio. <laughs>